Okay, so we talked about an offensive tackle prospect that received predictions in favor of Oklahoma, recently got an offer, but Oklahoma is potentially expecting a commitment this weekend, and it's something that we have to talk about it. Well, I say this weekend, it's going to be Friday, March 29th. We got to talk about it. We got to talk about why it's potentially Oklahoma and what the impact would be in that room. Additionally, I want to talk about some other guys that we obviously know have dates set for their commitment to end, but also guys that maybe don't have dates set that we could see drop here in the month of April, maybe even going into May. Names you just need to keep your eye on. Before we dive into it, before we talk about it, I need to hear from y'all. So make sure you're joining the discussion, jumping down in the comments below, giving me your thoughts, and ultimately, do you think Oklahoma secures this commitment on March 29th? All right. Guys, I got to pay for diapers, so make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. I forgot to mention that, right? Diapers are expensive. Went the other day. Wife was at Target, and I realized, oh, shoot, diapers are kind of expensive, and my kid's going to go through a bunch of them. So just tell me out, hit the like and subscribe button. All right. We got to talk about Tory Blaylock. And I know we've talked about him here before on the podcast, so this might not be new to a lot of you guys. But for those who haven't been paying attention, maybe live under a rock, which... Apparently is some Oklahoma fans because I've seen y'all in the, in the comments before. We got to talk about Tory. Now, Tory is a 5'11", 190 pound, four star running back out of Humble, Texas. He is the number 219th ranked player in the 247 composite rankings. Right now, Oklahoma currently holds two predictions from the 247 sports team in favor of them. That's going to be for Mike Roach, who a lot of you guys know he favors Oklahoma. Then you got Colin Kennedy. Colin Kennedy, you know when he submits a prediction in favor of a kid, it usually sticks. He's got a good sense for where guys are going to land. Now, Torrey Blaylock, I think this will be a really good pickup for Oklahoma because he's probably going to be your lone running back commit in this class. However, I really like Demarius Robinson out of Edmond Santa Fe. I think he's really talented. If you guys remember, Jay and I went out and watched him along with Josh Isosa and, um, oh, Devin Jordan as well last year. And he's he's talented. I'll tell you that. I don't know if he gets the offer from Oklahoma because you kind of wonder with numbers and the talent that's already in that room, like, do they want to take two guys and potentially push more than one guy out during the offseason? Because, I mean, it's just, I feel like at this point, it's bound to happen. I mean, you've got, I don't think, Sam Franklin, I don't think has eligibility after this season, so I don't think that's one you have to worry about. But you got Emeka Megwa, Gavin Sawchuk, Javante Barnes, Andy Bass, Xavier Robinson, Taylor Tatum. Like, this is a stacked running back room. And it's one where you're going to have some attrition. It's just a matter of when, not if. And so, you bring in a guy like Tory Blaylock, a guy that, when you look at his stats, 89 rush attempts, 616 rushing yards, and 11 rushing touchdowns, I don't think it speaks well enough for what he can do out of the backfield on the ground because he's got track speed. But he can also catch it out of the backfield, right? 268 receiving yards, 19 receptions, three receiving touchdowns. And we'll dive more into his film if he actually commits to the University of Oklahoma. But as you guys can see here with that athletic background that 247 has logged, a sub-11 100-meter time as a freshman, including 1070 and 1083 in the spring of 22. And then he posted 2255 in the 200. And then he had the Texas 21-6A Offensive Newcomer of the Year as a sophomore. And as you can see, bloodline, history, this man, (laughs) there's some talent in this family. And obviously with his dad playing in the NFL, like they know what it takes to get to the next level. So what DeMarco Murray is potentially selling Tory Blaylock might resonate because dad might be able to affirm that and say, yeah, like DeMarco Murray knows what he's talking about. He knows what he's doing. So as the 219th ranked player in the country, let's say, you land him, right? Right. You're probably moving up one or two spots in the class rankings. Oklahoma's number eight right now behind Auburn, behind Alabama, behind Penn State, Ohio State, Clemson, LSU, Notre Dame. These are all schools that have been hot on the recruiting trail. They've been getting guys. Shoot, uh, USC is number 11, and you guys saw what they did this weekend, and somehow they're still in the top five. Ooh, they're coming. 
They're coming. But we don't want to talk about that school out west because I know a lot of you guys, that's a that's a sore subject. Um, as far as Oklahoma goes, I'd expect probably with this commitment, they'd get maybe into the seven range. I don't think they scratched number six, but I think they could jump Auburn if that makes sense. Now, looking at another prospect that I think we need to be paying attention to, a guy that has announced early April he wants to announce – where he's going to be going to play college. He's got his top five, Mississippi State, Arkansas, Texas, Texas State, and Oklahoma. As you can see, currently got a prediction in the system in favor of Oklahoma. Again, from the one and only at 247 Sports, Colin Kennedy, who does a really good job at making these predictions. You usually see him hit on those. I want you to keep that in the back of your mind. That needs to be important when you think about some of these kids that have commitment dates and have a prediction from certain insiders. But Malik Hawkins at 6'1 half, 180 pounds, would be the first secondary commit for Oklahoma. Uh, now, 247 doesn't have him rated, but I believe he's a four-star, a three- or a four-star with rivals. I'd have to double-check on that. But he's a three- or a four-star with rivals. He's one of those two ratings. Malik Hawkins is the younger brother to Michael Hawkins, so you know, again, the family is surrounded by athletic talent. Malik Hawkins, though, we all know that Texas has really been pushing hard to get his commitment. They want this kid. And if you're Oklahoma, you feel good about your chances. You feel good about where you sit. you got Mississippi State and Arkansas. Mississippi State got Jeff Levy. Obviously, we know Jeff Levy has a good relationship with the family, so no shocker there on why they would be a player. The second or the third guy that I really want you guys to pay attention to does not have a commitment date set. And that's going to be a Marion Robinson. But I really like where Oklahoma sits and where Brandon Hall specifically sits with the Marion Robinson. Obviously, if you're Oklahoma, your biggest competitor here is going to be Arkansas. Little Rock, Arkansas, that's where he's from. In-state school. Usually these Arkansas kids go to Arkansas. That's just how it works. But he's a top 250 kid, literally number 250 in the rankings, at six foot 171 pounds. We've talked about how Zach Alley potentially wants to run three safeties in this defense. And in order to do that, you're going to have to have depth. You're going to have to have talented guys. So we've talked about Jonah Williams. We've talked about Marcus Wimberly. There's a chance they could possibly take three guys in this class. Keep that in mind. But I think a Marion Robinson, I believe he's leaning in Oklahoma. Brandon Hall has done a really good job in this recruitment, selling the kid on what he would be able to do for him in this defense. And then additionally, Oklahoma, like they're just doing better right now than Arkansas all around. So you would imagine they'd have the competitive advantage right there. Plus, he's been to Oklahoma like three or four times, and he has to do that on his own dime. And it's several hours away versus Arkansas. So it's like, you almost feel like those visits to Oklahoma way more than the visits to Arkansas. Now you got Oregon in the mix. So that's one you got to keep in mind. Oregon might be able to slide in, you know, Dan Lanning's really good at, you know, landing some of these Midwest kids, but Hey, that's how it works. I mentioned Marcus Wimberly. I still think Oklahoma is in a good position there. Do I think Oklahoma leads? Eh, I'm not sure. I, I don't necessarily have a good feeling about it, but Marcus Wimberly's getting some offers guys. Alabama, Oregon, I mean, Wisconsin's in there. Guys, I mean, if I'm Marcus Wimberly and let's say Oklahoma gets Jonah Williams and a Marion Robinson and he commits somewhere else, do you blame the kid? Because he's got some good offers and Oklahoma's safety room at that point would be really stacked. But those are kind of what I see for Oklahoma coming down the pipeline. Obviously, yesterday we talked about Ogumaro or Oguma, Ogumamoro. I will eventually get that right. Um, the offensive tackle that just moved to Elgin, Oklahoma from North Carolina, obviously that one's still going to be on the table. I believe he just announced a date as well, along with an official visit to Kansas state. So guys, if you have not already, make sure you hit that like, hit that subscribe button. Cause again, I got diapers to pay for. And if you haven't already join the discussion, jump down in the comments below.